the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. of the one holy and living God. Amen. Well, I get to begin today by uh, acknowledging something cool we got to do. If you're sort of in the middle section, you probably got to see it very well. Uh, one of our parishioners, Tony Conyers, uh, made this beautiful scroll and uh, allowed us to use it today. He offered it today because it was the gospel reading from Luke about Jesus reading from the scroll in the synagogue. Uh, and what's fun, of, what's kind of a little fun trivia about it is that Tony's scroll that he made is the gospel of Luke about Jesus reading from the scroll of Isaiah, which is quoting the book of Leviticus. So. <laughs> We have like so much, you know, data right here in this wonderful piece that he made. Tony's going to be on the patio with this after church if you'd like to see it. In 1021, I'm sorry, you didn't get to experience it too, but he'll be outside and y'all can, can look at this wonderful creation he made. Thanks, Tony, for letting us have something new and different today. So, so let's talk a little bit about what was in that scroll that, uh, that Jesus read from today. He is proclaiming the year of the Lord's favor. He's quoting that from Isaiah, and again, that comes from Leviticus. The year of the Lord's favor, you might have heard it referred to as the Jubilee year. Have you heard that word used before? It was, it was that every 50 years, uh, uh, it would sort of be declared that that year is the year that uh, lands would revert back to original owners. Uh, anyone who was enslaved would go free. If you owed debts to somebody, they were forgiven. And it was sort of like a, a, a clean slate, a reset button on all of the relationships and whatnot that you were in. Uh, and it's sort of an opportunity to start fresh and go forward in a new way. And so this, this year of the Lord's favor, Jesus says this scripture's been fulfilled and he's saying in me. The year of the Lord's favor is the reign of the Lord's favor, and it is through Jesus. And so it's no longer, in, in my estimation, just a year. It is, it is our life in Christ, is in the Lord's favor. And what a good gift, right? And in that, 
in that uh, we see that kind of all those relationships are re-leveled, right? And Paul acknowledges that too. There will be no, no Jew or Greek. There will be no slave or free. Every, you know, the caste system was a very important part of the biblical societal structure. You know, where you fit kind of on the, you know, proverbial totem pole of society was very important. And so Paul, in his letter to the Corinthians today, says we're kind of going from this to this. We're all right here. In Christ, we're all, we're all the same. And that's, <laughs> it's a hard pill to swallow, isn't it? In intellectually, we can all say, yeah, that's great. That's wonderful. That's how it should be, right? But the feeling state of that can get a little dicey because there's, there's not terribly a lot of messaging out there that, that actually encourages that understanding of equality. But I think Paul, Paul gets the struggle of the human story, doesn't he? He could be writing to us today just as, just as well as he was writing to them back then because the human struggle remains the same to be able to see one another, to be able to embrace one another on our journeys in faith is one of the great challenges. But what he pushes us to see is that the body of Christ is everybody. The body of Christ is everyone. Everyone is in the body. We cannot do without each other. We cannot say, I'm over here and you're over there and I don't need you, right? We, we, have to, we have to acknowledge that the body takes all the parts of the body. And so we cannot find our part of the body as a member uh, less valuable than someone else's. And we can't say that anyone else's part of the body is any less valuable than others. All of us together are equal and vital members of, of the body of Christ, right? And so, like I said, intellectually, we all know this, it, right? It makes perfect sense, uh, but the day-to-day -day practicality of it is very challenging. Are you doing the best you can who, could, who can kind of say, generally speaking, in, in your day-to-day -day life and, and in your interactions and in your relationships, could you, could you generally say, you know, I'm doing the best I can. I'm trying to be good to people, right? I'm trying to, trying to take care of people and be good to one another and do, do the, the right things in life, right? We're, yes? Are you doing the best you can? Yes. Yeah, we're doing the best we can. Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> ah. Thank you. It is easy for us to uh, both be critical of ourselves and critical of others. Sometimes we think people are doing the best we can, but sometimes when you get cut off in traffic and that guy just zooms in front of you, we're not thinking he's doing the best he can, right? None of us are thinking, oh, you know, poor guy doing the best he can. But, Perhaps if you're like me, you've cut somebody off in traffic and you go, oh, shoot, I shouldn't, that was, that was the wrong move, oh darn it, I, I'm sorry, and you kind of try to do the hand gesture, right, to say, no, 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 I'm sorry, you know, that was a mistake, it was a bad choice, right? Have you been there? But here's the thing, though it's such a small example, but it is almost impossible in that moment sometimes to feel like, to feel like, A, if it's us doing that, that anybody understands that we're not a big jerk, that we just made a mistake, right? And we certainly have a hard time thinking that about somebody else who's done it to us. The jerk thing, you know, we wanna, we wanna go there right quick, right? But the fact is we're all doing the best we can. And what would it mean for us to really realize that 
about everyone we come in contact with? What would it mean to, to look at different people that we don't know very well, to look at groups of people that we're not familiar with, we don't understand, that we're uncomfortable with for some reason, and imagine that they are doing the best they can, the same way we are. Does it cost us anything to believe that of someone? Does it cost you anything to believe they're doing the best they can too? It doesn't cost us a thing. And so, so the invitation is, is to see and remember that this body of Christ is, is all together striving towards something, striving toward, you know, the cross that is the message of hope and redemption that we all want to embrace and live in our life, but we all do it differently. We just all do it different from each other. And we tend to try and kind of sync up or align with folks who do it similarly to us, right? We spend a lot, we, we tend to want to spend our time with folks who, uh, who engage the way we do, believe the way we do, act the way we do. But when we do that, we make very little room. We make very little room for other parts of the body of Christ to grow us, to change us, to build us up in new ways that we don't even know yet that we need. But Paul reminds us, Paul says to us, it's the people we don't think we need that we need the most. It's the, it's the bodies that we think, the parts of the body that, that we think are the most inferior that are the least inferior. What does that mean for us in today's world? What does that mean for us in this community here? What does it mean for you in any of the relationships you have? Can you, can you, come to my, can you bring to mind somebody that just irks you? that makes you mad, that annoys you like crazy, right? Everybody's got one at least, right? Come on, you know. Could you, could you take a moment and give them the benefit of believing they're doing the best they can? In spite of what I may think about them, they're doing the best that they can. What that's called is empathy. That's called putting yourself in their shoes and trying to understand the perspective they live from. That our own perspective is not the only one or the right one. There is no one right perspective. There is only the, the multitude and diversity of perspectives that the whole body of Christ brings together. So empathy takes practice. Empathy invites us into thinking in new ways. It asks us to say about someone else, I wonder if how their, how their upbringing was different from mine. I wonder I wonder what their career path has been. I wonder if it's been a straight line or I wonder if it's kind of been a, a crooked path along the way. Empathy is wondering what hurts or pains or griefs have occurred in their life that impact how they interact with the world. See, the thing of it is that all of us want to receive empathy right? If we screw up, if we make a bad choice, if we hurt someone, we all have our immediate perspective, right, that says, ah, I didn't mean to do that. I'm so sorry. 
that's not who I really am. Here's, here's the truth of me, right? We want people to see that and give us that grace, right? Do we want that? We want that grace because we know the fullness of our story that impacts everything we do and who we've become and who we are becoming. And Paul is inviting us to do that for the rest of the body as well. For everyone we encounter, to be able to say, what is your story that's led you to this place at this time, to this belief set, to this faith set? What is it? What is it that impacts you? And how is it that you want to be in the world and how can I be in the world with you? It is a practice, empathy. It is not something you're either born with or you don't, or you're not. It is something we all practice and we can get better at with time. Doesn't just, you don't just flip a switch and you're all of a sudden empathetic. All of us have the opportunity though to take three steps back from whatever judgment we'd like to bestow on someone else and offer instead that breath that, that invites us to say, let me understand their view. And it's when we do this all together that the body of Christ starts moving forward together as a body of Christ. And I think that's what enables us to proclaim God's favor to the world. That the favor is for all of us. It's how we engage in this ministry to the world. By, by moving forward seeing each other and our experiences and our lives and the, what we bring to this world as equally valid, right on the same playing field as everyone else. And just a kind of sidebar thought, you'll screw up if you're practicing, okay? But don't let that stop you from trying again. Don't let that stop you from doing it again, trying again. And even with the same person, if you screw it up there, it's okay. Wouldn't you like to hear from somebody, man, you know, I did not nail that. Can I try again to be in relationship with you? Wouldn't you respect hearing that from someone if they were brave enough to say that to you? And so, and so Paul invites us to, to the greater gifts the greater gift of relationship, of seeing one another and the gifts that we all bring to the body as equally important, valid, and vital to the movement of the body of Christ through the world and the spread of the kingdom of God in the here and now. Amen.